everybody's gonna have a different opinion when it comes to the end of the year awards. Whether it's you have this player on your first all NBA team, you have this player on your second all NBA team, this is your MVP, this is your defensive player of the year. But I'm here to bring a little bit of calm down noise to the ass from a player that just from a guy who just sits at home all day, watches basketball, really doesn't have a life outside of picking players apart, seeing what they do from the first game of the season, summer league, throughout the whole entire season. So I wanna talk about the obvious one first. Well, first, let me give my kudos, obviously, the reigning six man of the year, Jordan Clarkson. I thought he had a down year. He, he struggled with some injuries. There was a COVID protocol and stuff like that, but he's obviously in my top five for six man of the year. The other one I, I wanna shout out and give some love to is Kevin Love. My Cleveland fans, I know you're going to hate this, but Kevin Love's not the sixth man of the year. But Kevin Love, like, last year totally was complaining off of these things. Everybody was saying that Kevin Love can't play basketball anymore. I remember he dropped out of the USA national team. Kevin Love really revised his career this year, showed that he has a role. He's one of the best scorers off the bench. He played really good in that playing game versus the Nets. But obviously, I want to say my sixth man of the year is Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero this year averaged over 20 points a game. He's the first six man to do that since Lou Will and Jamal Crawford. Besides that, there's only been eight six mans that have done that in the history of the NBA. And Tyler Hero just coming off the bench, being your number one scorer. It, a lot of people are like, well, Tyler Hero doesn't really fit the criteria to be six man of the year. He averages 30 minutes a game. But it's like all the criteria is, is if you come off the bench and you don't start over 50 to 75% of your games, then you're considered a six man. So Tyler Hero for me, runaway winner with that with that award. Just the best score, the best option on that Miami Heat team, who's number one in the Eastern Conference and one of the dark horse teams. I don't actually I'd say they're one of the favorite teams to win the championship this year. Next, I want to talk about Coach of the Year. My obvious right off the bat favorite favorite is definitely Monte Williams the Spurs 60 finished with a 64 win season one of the best seasons we've seen in NBA history record breaking for that uh Suns Phoenix Suns organization most wins of all time they passed that Phoenix Suns organization that had Sean Marion Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire and Channing Frye and Jared Dudley so that's incredible Hat tips off to Monte Williams but there are a few other names I want to mention Taylor Jenkins from the Memphis Grizzlies, I thought Taylor Jenkins, I think a big thing for me when I look at coach of the year is what was their expectations coming to the into the season and what did they do to pass that? So for me, Taylor Jenkins, they the Memphis Grizzlies were supposed to be a seven or eight seed coming in and they finished second. This team is 18 and four without John Morant this year. So for me, you got to give him a nod for coach of the year. Now looking in the East. So those are my two for the West candidates. Obviously, Monte is my favorite. Now, if we look over for the East, I got to bring up JB Bickerstaff with this Cleveland Cavaliers. Nobody, even me, doubted the Cleveland Cavaliers. Nobody thought that the Cleveland Cavaliers were going to be anywhere close to where they are. They're now struggling to get into the playoffs in the seventh seed. Hopefully they can beat the Hawks, but I think this guy definitely deserves some nods for coach of the year. Obviously, you have your Spolstra's. But I think he's just been in that conversation so many times. And then my runner up to Monte Williams would be Eme Adoko. If you look at this Boston Celtics team before All-Star break, they were 23 and 24. Everybody was counting them out. They weren't even going to make the playoffs. They were ninth. They were two games behind 500. Flip the script around. They have a 57-50 win season. And they almost are the number one seed just behind the Miami Heat. So those are my coaches of the year candidate. Obviously, I would pick Monte Williams as my winner. Emma Adoko, Taylor Jenkins, JB Bickerstaff. If you want to say Chris Finch of the Minnesota Timberwolves, I wouldn't be complaining that you have him in that conversation. I think seven or eight guys that I uh, wrote down that I wanted to talk about. One of them was Herb Jones. Herb Jones is an incredible defender. I heard that they actually have better plus minus when he's off the floor, but He's one of the best, better charge takers in the league. If you actually tune into Pelican games, he always guards the best player on the other team. I remember watching in summer league and the coach was like, um, we're going to have this guy starting. And everybody was like, no, no. Willie Green was like, we're going to have him starting. Everybody was like, no, we can't start Herb Jones. He can't even score the basketball. And now we see, like we saw the other night, that Herb Jones is a legit defender and he can stretch the floor and he does everything on the basketball court. Another guy I want to bring up, 
They kind of is similar to Herb Jones. They get, obviously it's a defensive award, but if you're just horrible on the other side of the basketball, then you're not going to get as many minutes. So another guy would be Gary Payton. Gary Payton just is pretty terrible when it comes to scoring, unless it's like dunking or hitting a wide open three, but his defensive paralysis is really incredible. Um, Drew Holiday obviously would take one of my guard spots on an all NBA team. And then Rudy Gobert would be another guy that I'd have to mention in my top three conversation for a defensive player of the year. But really for me, it comes down to three guys. The three guys I want to mention the most for defensive player of the years would be Rob Williams, Time Lord of the Boston Celtics, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Marcus Smart. Uh, Rob Williams is just incredible in that three-man switch. They switch all five guys. They'll rotate one on the bottom. Rob will come up. He can guard all five positions. He's averaging 2.5 blocks a game. I just think Rob Williams is incredible. We're going to see him win a defensive player of the year if he can just stay healthy. Giannis, uh, do I even have to say anything about Giannis? He's in the de runner for defensive player of the year every year. And then my dark horse, who I do believe should win it this year, is Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is top five in deflections, top three in steals, top five in defensive win shares, top six in defensive rating, top on the number one defense in the league. So me personally, the the category for defensive player of the year is, is your team overall playing defense? I don't think that's true, but I think Marcus Smart is the igniter. He does everything on the basketball court. He locks down all five positions. If you look at some of Marcus Smart's numbers when he's facing top defenders in the league, it's it's or top offensive scores in the league, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I'd have to give my nod to Marcus Smart for my defensive player of the year if I had a bat. All right, let's talk all NBA teams. So my first all NBA team for my, this is where it gets tricky. Like I said, it's positional. So people are gonna get mad about this, but I had to pick a choice. I made my choice, so here we go. So my point, my two guards for my first all NBA team are gonna be Luka Doncic and Devin Booker. The reason why I have these two guys, for Devin Booker, it's team success, played almost all 82 games. I think he played 78. The last one that he sat out, or last two that he sat out was because they already clinched the one seed a long time ago, but he just wanted to get the record. A lot of people would say Ja or Curry. Ja missed 20 games. Curry's missed 25. Curry kind of slowed down, had one of the lower efficiency shootings of his year. I think Luka Doncic has been incredible throughout the whole season. So those are my two guards for my All-NBA first team. If you have anybody else, I understand why, but those are my two guards. My One of my forward positions is obviously going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. Do, do I, even, I don't even have to say anything about that. And then my other forward is going to be Jason Tatum. My center for the All-NBA first team is Nikola Jokic. So that would be my, my first five. It would be um, Booker, Luka, Giannis, Tatum, and Nikola Jokic. My second All-NBA team will be John ja Morant as my first guard, Stephen Curry as my second guard. My small forward is going to be Kevin Durant. My center is going to be Joel Embiid. So those are just looking out. You could obviously have Nikola Jokic over there and in front of him, but I would just have to say that I'd have Kevin Durant. And then my other forward is going to be DeMar DeRozan. A lot of people would argue that LeBron James is over DeMar DeRozan. I have to say DeMar DeRozan has a better record. Any team that's 11 seed, unless they're putting up historically crazy numbers, I couldn't have them over there. LeBron only played 50 games this season, so I have to put DeMar as the, as the nod. Steph Curry and John Morant under Luka and Booker, just because game played, obviously team success, I think. Devin Booker and Luka have been the two best guards in the league this year. So that's just my opinion on that. My third team All-NBA, there's a few guys that I want to mention get stubbed. Jonathan Mitchell didn't make it. J Jalen Brown didn't make it. And those just personally for me, missing a lot of games. Donovan Mitchell has missed almost 30-something games this season. He's been inefficient. Uh, he's very close for me, but this is where it kind of adds to team success for uh, my third All-NBA team. So my third All NBA team, my first point guard is obviously going to be Trey Young. Trey Young is having a historic season. If you ask me if the Hawks were a top three seed, Trey Young would probably be on my first team All NBA. That's how good of a season he's averaged: twenty eight, eleven, and six, or whatever it is for a point guard. My other uh, guard on my third All NBA team is going to be Christopher Paul. Chris Paul just catalyst for this Suns team. He plays all five positions on defense, and I just think I had to give him the nod over Donovan Mitchell this season. So my first forward on this team is going to be LeBron James. A lot of people would say they'd rather have LeBron than DeMar. I'm personally going to take DeMar. LeBron missed too many games for me this season to be on my second All-NBA team. 
And my power forward, who I think people will be happy about this on this team, is Pascal Siakam. Siakam this year has totally gotten a deeper bag. He used to be a spin, back, a spin move jack now. Siakam can get to the bucket, score. He's just, I, I heard something and it made me laugh. He's like, Siakam has the most easiest 30 point games. Like Siakam scores 30 and nobody bats an eye. The Raptors have been very successful this year and people sleep on it. And I think they need a player on an all NBA team. And for me, that'd be Pascal Siakam. My center position on my all NBA third team is not Rudy Gobert, it's Carl Anthony Towns. A lot of people would say, I wish this was unpositionalist because Cat deserves to be on a second all NBA team, but I'll say Cat is on an all NBA team. You can go get your contract extension, buddy, but I just think that Cat has been super dimensional for this team. He's one of the greatest, he's self proclaimed biggest, greatest shooting big man of all time, but I'm just so proud of Cat, all that he had to endure to be on this team. So let's just go over these one more time. My first all NBA team is Devin Booker and Luka Doncic at my guards. And then I have Giannis, Jason Tatum, and Nikola Jokic at my center. My second all NBA team, I have um, DeMar DeRozan and Kevin Durant at my forward, Joel Embiid at my center. And my two guards are Stephen Curry and John Morant. My third all NBA team, I have Trey Young, Christopher Paul as my point guard. And then I have LeBron James, Pascal Siakam as my forward. And my center, I have Carl Anthony Towns. You guys let me know what your first All-NBA team is. Like I said, this is my, my list. It's not yours. I'm just a guy with a microphone. Anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate it.